I call to order the regular meeting of the mayor and board of trustees of the village of Burr Ridge for April 13, 2020. Um, if we can get the boardroom, um, I'll lead the pledge. Yep. Can we get the boardroom up? Boardroom is up. Hey, Brad, you were going to say how to unmute, but I guess I figured it out. Yeah, it was star six. Yeah, it would be helpful if you said it. Sorry. Okay. All right. I, I can't see, but I suppose we'll all just do the pledge, okay? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, indivisible liberty, liberty, and justice for all. Okay, Madam Clerk, please take the roll. Trustee Francis. Here. Trustee Schiappa. Here. Trustee Paveza. Here. Trustee Snyder. Here. Trustee Mattal. Here. Trustee Model. Present by phone. Mayor Grasso. Here. Okay, uh, we do not. Um, by the way, before I go any further, um, it, is there a, a lag? Remember the last time we were in the boardroom, there was a lag. Is there a lag? There, There is not to anybody that is participating in the meeting currently. Okay. Because I just wanted to know if I had to stop talking at some point for everybody to hear me. All right. Uh, we have no presentations and uh, no public hearings for tonight. Um, the consent agenda. Um, does anybody want anything removed from the consent agenda? Okay, <clears throat> all items listed with an asterisk are considered routine by the village board and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these terms unless a board member or citizen so request in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda discussed by the board, opened for public comment and voted upon during this meeting. Five minutes, A, approval of special board meeting of March 30, 2020. B, approval of budget workshop of March 13, 2020. Six, ordinances A, <clears throat> approval of an ordinance authorizing the sale by online auction of personal property owned by the village of Burr Ridge Public Works Equipment. Seven, resolutions B, approval of staff recommendation to table indefinitely a resolution granting an extension for completion of subdivision improvements for Lakeside Point of Burr Ridge subdivision. <clears throat> B, excuse me, eight, considerations. C, approval of recommendation to renew the contract of village-wide landscape maintenance to Desidero Landscaping LLC of Grant Park, Illinois in the amount of $105,230. D, approval of recommendation to renew the contract for mosquito abatement to Clark Equipment Mosquito Management, Inc. in the amount of $45,400. E, approval of recommendation to renew the contract for street sweeping services to Lakeshore Recycling Systems of West Chicago, Illinois in the amount of $26,736. F, approval of recommendation to award the contract uh, for transmission line tree trimming to Commonwealth Edison in the amount of $62,505.33. G, approval of recommendation to award the contract for cleaning north and south water towers to Midwest Mobile Washers of Morrison, Illinois in the amount of $12,600. And H, approval of the vendor list dated April 13, 2020 in the amount of $429,889.88 for all funds plus $192,206.86 for payroll for the period ending March 21, 2020 for a grand total of $622,096.74, which includes special expenditures of $78,927.75 uh, to Kivit for December 2019 through March 2020 consulting services. 
Can I get a motion to approve the following items on the consent agenda? 5A and B, 6A, um, 7B, 8, C, D, E, F, G, and H. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Trustee Schiappa? Yes. Trustee, Trustee Snyder? Yes. Trustee Mittal? Yes. Trustee Model? No. Trustee Francis? Trustee Francis? Uh, this is uh, Administrator Pollock. I just got a message from Trustee Francis that he was dropped. He lost his connection. Okay, Should we go on, Mayor? Uh, let's, let's give him an opportunity to get on. He should be able to uh, just re-click that link, Doug, and reconnect. I'll ask Trustee Paveza right now. Yes. It appears that his uh, surface has lost internet connection. I don't know if he's restarting it or if he lost internet. Doug, he can call into the number as well if you want to text him that. <coughs> he's trying, he says. I do not see a surface online here. This is Mike Durkin. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi, Mike. yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Gary, can I ask Mike, uh, our wonderful attorney, for a quick question while we're waiting for Guy to come back? Sure. Uh, sure. With regards to uh, something that came in this afternoon from the Illinois Workmen's Comp Commission saying that the public, you know, our uh, police officers and first responders will be covered under Workmen's Comp, I didn't have time to verify with the carriers. Mike, are you aware of anything like that? Um, it may be in terms of the occupational health uh, presumption um, that uh, the is exposed to the COVID-19 virus. Correct. But I have not. I have not seen any notifications, uh, Trustee Snyder. So other than general communications, um, as opposed to the village's carrier. Okay, well, if we could do that and maybe follow up with uh, Doug and Evan to the Illinois Municipal League about anything that rolls over for the virus, saying it would be a covered under a workman's comp policy. Right? I can read you the change. This is trustee model. I've got it in front of me. It was a ruling by the Illinois Workers' Compensation Commission on a nine to zero vote. 
uh, and it expands the scope of the Illinois Occupational Diseases and Workers' Compensation Act. Emergency rule amends section 9030.70 of the commission's rule of evidence. It adds to that section a new A1 to provide a rebuttable presumption for first responders and frontline workers who are exposed to COVID-19. It adds A2, which defines first responders and frontline workers. And the definition includes what the statute already covers regarding first responders, but expands the definition to include all workers of the essential business provided for in the Governor Pritzker's order. Thank you. So as I said, it was the uh, presumption uh, that if they um, are uh, stricken with COVID-19 uh, and they can demonstrate that it was uh, uh, at work, the presumption uh, that they acquired it at work needs to be um, overcome by the employer. The employer would have the burden of proof, but they, they do need to acquire it while on the job, a general exposure to it would still be a defensible claim. Okay, thank you. And there's also some argument as to whether or not this rulemaking was legal. Some people believe it went above the rulemaking authority of the commission and really needs to be done in a statutory way in, the, in, the, in Springfield, not by a rulemaking. So we'll see if this actually goes through or not. All right, do we have um, his guy back on I'm here? back, I'm back, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So, Guy, I don't know where we lost you. We uh, there was a motion to approve of the items on the consent agenda, and Karen was taking the roll call. And that's and why I was lost. Uh, and that, okay. Trustee right. Francis, then for the yes. for the roll call. Thank you. Yes. That's five Thank zero you. five to one. Five to one. Trustee model voting against the consent agenda, which includes paying our vendors. Okay. Understood. Um, That'll take us. Thank you for waiting for me to get reconnected. Sure, absolutely. That'll take us to <clears throat> seven a seven a resolutions consideration of a resolution censuring trustee Zach Zachary model for the second time. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. OK, any discussion? Yes, I have some discussion, please, Mayor. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, once again, I think it's improper for this board to censure me simply because I've expressed my opinion of the staff and of the mayor. I'm supposed to have an opinion. You all should have an opinion too. We are supposed to be independent and thoughtful. We're supposed to express our opinions on matters that concern the village. I have simply done that, expressed my opinion, and I've tried to get you all to do the right thing, to follow the law, and to follow the oath of office that we took. Holding the staff accountable to the taxpayers and to the board is what we are supposed to be doing. The staff, Doug and Jerry in particular, have lied about many things, and I've proven it to you. They attempt to cover up illegal activity in the village as well as their own incompetence. They allow the mayor to run the town without the board's oversight and to improperly block me as an elected official from participating in the process. This is immoral and illegal. Furthermore, it's my opinion that Gary is a mobster based on the observations of the mayor's activities and those of his associates. And he's even taken campaign donations from convicted mobsters. Again, the Mayor, can once you again, call this member to order? I, call this order. member to order. I am tired of the name calling. This if is. I'm, I have the. I, take I will the, finish speaking. Thank you. Calling. If the trustees once again vote to improperly censure me, you all are allowing yourselves to be used as political pawns by the mayor as he seeks to abuse and harass a political opponent via an official act of government. This is wrong. This is how a mobster behaves. They threaten, they harass, they intimidate, and they hurt others to seek financial gain for themselves and their family. The mayor seeks to eliminate and silence any opposition to his wayward plans. He has attempted to improperly silence me in court, and now he's attempting to silence me in the boardroom repeatedly. He will never prevail, and this will bring his own failure. And this action, if taken by the board, reflects very poorly on the board. Let's call the question. Let's uh, roll call, please. I have a few comments. Go ahead. This is Trustee Franzese. We are back here. We are back here again tonight discussing Mr. Model's behavior. 
I would have thought that the unanimous censure resolution this board passed last November would have been the end of it. I would have thought that the reset Mr. Model asked for at the February 10th board meeting would have ended his bad behavior. Nothing has changed with Mr. Model. Mr. Model called a staff member a liar at the previous board meeting on March 31st. This was a public setting for all the residents of the village to hear. Mr. Model's name calling is demeaning and it is abusive behavior of that staff member. It is not opinion expressing. It seems as though when Mr. Model does not receive the answer he wants to hear from staff, he calls them a liar and threatens them with their jobs. In addition, Mr. Model called the mayor of the village an ethnic slur. We all heard it, no doubt about it. He did it again tonight. He has insulted and offended the mayor, who is an Italian American, Trustee Schiappa, who is also an Italian American, I myself, another Italian American, all of our children and our grandchildren with this insult. In addition, he has offended and insulted all of the fine Italian Americans who call Burr Ridge their home and those Italian Americans who live in our state and our country. At the February 10th board meeting, Mr. Model suggested that there be a reset of relations between himself and other board members. At that meeting, I suggested to Mr. Model. Who's speaking that he here? Who's speaking here? I had the floor. Why was I, why was the, I was taken no, away from the no, floor? No, you don't. No, you don't, Zach. You abused You recognized me and I was speaking and then you muted me. You've blocked me. That's illegal. You, you are you are abusing the process. I was Gary. speaking. I don't care if you don't like what I was saying, Gary. It is my opinion. You had your opportunity, Zach. You I didn't get to speak. You cut me off in the middle of what I wanted to say, Gary. You are. You said Gary, you are violating the Open Meetings Act. You are violating Illinois law. And if you trustees carry on this path, you will be you will be engaged in it as well. You bring peril and jeopardy to yourself in the village. Why did you mute me when you recognized me to speak? You are not recognized, okay? I was recognized and I didn't finish. You you are finished. Go ahead, uh, trust oh, me. Oh, I'm not finished. I was speaking. No, no, you had- The kangaroo your, court, this your, is a farce, Gary. You had your vitriolic uh, time. No Gary, more. I will say my opinion of you that you I are a mobster, Gary. It is my opinion that you engage in criminal acts and you use this- mayor to call you to order, period. No, I was speaking. You are out of order. I was recognized to speak, and I had the floor, and I want to finish speaking. Call him to order, please. Call yourself to order. You're out of order. You are out of order, guy. I was speaking, and I was recognized. I will finish my statements. No, you will not. Okay? That's it. I'm a guys. duly elected official, Gary. You don't have that authority. It's a violation of the Open Meetings Act. You had your opportunity to speak. Oh, no, you didn't. You muted me while I was speaking. Only I did not mute you at all, okay? I didn't mute you. Well, who you did, Gary? I, I'm, I'm sorry. I have no Zach, idea Zach. whether or not you were muted or not. Matt, I'm going to file another violation of the Open Meetings Act if I don't get to finish my... Will you step in? Go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Trustee Francis. You can finish. Thank you. At the February 10th board meeting, Mr. Model suggested that there be a reset of relations between himself and other board members. At that meeting, I suggested to Mr. Model that he apologize to those staff members he had offended and bullied in the past. To date, I'm not, I'm told that there have been no apologies. That reset Mr. Model requested of board relations lasted one meeting, maybe two. As elected officials representing the residents of this village, we are all held to a higher standard of excellence. This is not some video game where you press the reset button and everything zeroes out and you start a brand new game all over again. These are human beings you're insulting. These are fathers and mothers, sisters and brothers, and most importantly, family members. Criminals. Miss, Mr. Model cannot treat staff and fellow board members with, if Mr. Model cannot treat staff members and fellow board members with civility and respect, he should resign. Thank you. All right, anybody else? Yes, I would like to read my statement. No, I, you I had, have something to say, Mayor. You, you had your statement. You I did not have my say. You cut me off and you muted me. I did not mute you. You can file your statement and make it part of the minutes. Uh, but, but you. Oh, that's can, illegal, Gary. You can file your statement and make it part of the minutes. No, I will make my statement now. I'm a duly elected official. I'm asking to speak. 
No, you had your opportunity. No, you Anybody cut me else? off. Anybody you else? cut me off. Who I, muted I didn't me? Mayor, I'd like to say a few things. I also agree with Trustee Franzis. As an Italian American, I found trustee models of comments of the last meeting and this meeting to be offensive. I don't believe to any of his comments or his name calling to be productive at all. I believe that there are any problems that he sees, he needs to go through the process, identify the problems. And to this date, there are no problems. He's creating problems for the village. There's, there is no corruption in this village. We have a fine mayor. We have a fine board of trustees. And You're a mobster. A very fine, and he's calling me a mobster. And a fine well, board of I'm trustees. that Gary's a mobster. I'm sorry, you keep muting me and blocking me. I can't talk. I've not been given a fair chance You're to speak. Act out of order, Zach. You've already had your opportunity to speak. I had the floor, and you took it from me improperly. You're out of order, Gary. I'm going to finish my statement. Attorney Durkin, will you step in? My opinion is that the chair controls the floor during debate. Thank you. The chair gave me the floor and recognized me to speak. No, and, and you abused it, and I recognize I haven't abused it. I wasn't done speaking. You just didn't like what I had to say, and that's why you're censoring me. I, I, I you don't like my opinion. It is not proper for you to block me and censor me. Not like you are insulting ethnic groups. You are insulting... It has nothing to do with your ethnicity, Gary. It has everything to do with your behavior. No. The, okay, Mayor... Can you call the question, please? Can I make a comment? Can I make a comment? Let 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 talk, let Schiappa done be uh, be finished, and then we'll go to you, Al. Okay. Are you done, Tony? Yeah, I'm. I'm finished. Okay. Thank you. Trustee Paveza. I've been a trustee for over twenty. Way years. too long. I've been a trustee for over twenty five. Too long. Years. What? You've been a trustee for too long. Al, didn't you tell me that you don't want any more blacks to come to the village? Isn't that what you told me? I've been a trustee for over 25 years. Step down I've now. I've worked with a lot of good trustees, and I've worked with several. You're not one of them. And I, over the years, we've made Burr Ridge the special place that it is. And never in all of these 25 years have I seen any trustee that is as abusive and as negative as trustee model. No wonder we're having problems. And like Al, you said, helped to bring a convicted rapist, pedophile, and heroin dealer to town. Gigi raped a 14-year-old girl, beat her with a baseball bat, buddy, her blood coming out of her lips, out of her ears, picked her over and over and over and over again, and you helped him come to town, and now you want to give him money, Al? You disgust me. Attorney Durkin. He's abused his privileges. Mute him out. Go ahead, Al. No, I, that's, I just wanted to make that comment that in all these years, never have as the board have to put up with any trustee that is as negative and as abusive as trustee model. I mean, we didn't get and make Burr Ridge the special place it is when we constantly had to fight with another trustee over the right way to do things. We did it the right way. And I don't Al, know. you I are abusive. That he, had a, he got this way because he lost the mayor's race. I mean, if, if you are in a competition, you have to be prepared to use, lose, whether it's sports, business, or politics, and evidently trustee model don't know. You should be prepared to go to jail. That's all I've got to say. Anybody okay. Else? All right. Anybody else? All right. Roll call, please. Thank Mayor, you. Mayor, could I please have who who made the first and who made the second? Uh, Schiappa made the Schiappa first made motion. It and Snyder seconded. Thank you. Trustee Schiappa? Yes. Trustee Snyder? Yes. Trustee Matal? Yes. Trustee Francis? Yes. Trustee Paveza? Yes. Trustee Model? He does not get the vote. He doesn't get the vote. This is um, this is about him. Our ordinance specifically does not allow uh, anybody. In fact, this was abused back when Zach was sitting as, and I want the record to show, it was abused when he was sitting as the acting mayor when he tried to save himself from being voted 
uh, off as an acting mayor. Thank um, you. Doesn't get to vote in this. It's 5-0. Yes. 5-0, the motion passes. All right. That takes us to considerations, update regarding budget revisions for draft fiscal year 2021. This is illegal. Go ahead, um, Doug, you've got the floor. Uh, th thank you, Mayor Grasso. Um, You're I'd bringing like legal. To, I'd like to um, introduce uh, Jerry Sapp, our finance director. He will give you an uh, overview of our revisions to the budget. As I'm sure all of you are aware and, and realize. Are you going to lie to us today? That we. Uh, Zach, if you keep interrupting and, and making accusations, I will have you muted. Go ahead, Doug. We have uh, spent the last month uh, looking at revisions to the budget based on the current economic conditions. So just let us know which of these are live. Caused by the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Please mute him, uh, trustee model. He continues to be abusive and insulting to everyone. Go ahead. So we have been working on updates to the budget for several weeks and we are, um, uh, we'll have a uh, final budget, a revised budget document uh, ready this week for uh, review by the trustees and approval at the uh, April 27th board meeting. This time I'd like to introduce Jerry Sapp, uh, the finance director, and Amy Nelson, assistant finance director, who will give you a uh, overview of our revenue uh, ex expectations, revised revenue expectations, as well as our expenditure, uh, revised expenditure budget, uh, so that uh, when you do receive the detailed uh, budget later this week, um, you'll have uh, some uh, introduction to that and the changes that we've made. So with that, I would uh, turn it over to uh, Jerry and Amy. Thank you, Hi, uh, Doug. Thanks, Doug. Jerry? Yeah, over the uh, past several weeks, uh, since the uh, pandemic took center stage, uh, the finance department, has uh, been working on a difficult task of trying to quali qualify the uh, quantify the uh, uh, fiscal impact that the p pandemic will have on the village's budget. Uh, in, in evaluating every revenue line item in our budget, we use a, uh, the following uh, uh, methodology. We look at uh, actual seats that we have received, and then we do look at local trends that uh, we accumulate from various businesses, restaurants, uh, top 10 taxpayers. And then, you know, uh, thirdly, just any knowledge we can get from con consultations and seminars from uh, uh, village resources, advisors, membership organizations, investments, uh, Illinois Government Finance Officers Association, the Municipal League, et cetera. You know, literally tens of thousands of people are, are pitching in and, and kind of trying to work through uh, some of these issues. Uh, in addition to just our standard uh, methodology, uh, we have researched uh, how other historical events such as uh, Y2K, 9-11, and the Great Recession had on the impact in the past. Uh, so this uh, summarized report it reviews the uh, significant impact uh, since March and April of our, uh, uh, of our current year FY1920 budget, as well as some of the anticipated revenue changes for fiscal 2021. Uh, we'll provide a final, more detailed uh, impact analysis uh, with the final 2021 budget. Uh, so if, uh, you know, Amy, if you could uh, just kind of step through the uh, general fund impact uh, uh, summary and some of the you know, high level uh, uh, summary information. Sure. Thanks, Jerry. So as Jerry said, after the March 13th budget workshop a few weeks, uh, about a month ago hey, today. Amy, after can I interrupt the... just a moment? Yes. Just, um... Sure. Is everybody able to see this chart okay? Um, uh, yeah. Yes. It's challenging me a little bit, but I, I went over it um, today. But um, uh, if everybody can see it, fine. I just wanted to be sure that everybody could see it okay. Yes, the general better, fund thank chart, you. right? Okay. Thank, thank, I'm sorry, Amy. Thank you. Please go ahead. Sure. No, no problem. 
Thank you. So as Jerry, as Jerry said, over the last uh, several weeks, we've had the difficult task of trying to quantify the financial impact that the pandemic is going to have, especially on our general fund, which is our primary operating fund for the village. So in a, at a very high level, the first step in this process was to quantify the revenue impact. And what we've concluded after we actually had to revise, if you'll see on the left side of that chart, we had an original estimate of where our 1920 year end was going to end up. And then we had to factor in basically the last six weeks of the fiscal year, starting mid-March through April 30th, because that obviously is going to have a significant impact on what we originally thought our, our 1920 fiscal year would end up. So overall for 1920, we're estimating a, a shortfall in revenue of about 370,000. And then looking ahead to 2021, we're looking at a shortfall of about 988,000 in revenue. So in total, what we're seeing, you know, starting in mid-March through the end of next fiscal year, approximately a $1.3 million shortfall in revenue. So once we knew kind of that stake in the ground of where we were going to end up projecting, that's where we had to also look at the expenditure side. So in this summary shown below, we still show you a revised budget that is balanced after cutting various capital and operating expenditures. And we'll go through, I'll go through on the following pages, how that, how we derived at that. And that's without dipping into any reserves that we've, um, that we have available. So going on to the next page, just to give you some background on the general fund revenue impact analysis that we've done, we've looked at the significant revenue sources in the general fund and the ones that are gonna be mostly impacted, which most communities in, you know, in Illinois and all around the country is sales tax and also our places of eating tax. And then for fiscal year 1920, another significant item that will be impacted is our permanent revenue just due to the village hall being closed and doing, um, you know, kind of suspending some permit activity until the, um, through the end of the year, that will probably ramp up um, once the shelter in place order um, is lifted. So, uh, and then on the 2021 budget, we've seen about 800,000 in the sales tax and 155,000 in the places of eating tax. And then we also expect in that intergovernmental line item for 2021, that is the income tax that we anticipate will also see a short flow, which is a flow through from the businesses to the state then we will, we anticipate seeing a, a decline. And just, and uh, you'll see in the report later that it will be given to you later this week with the budget draft. We've used a uh, graduated approach as far as what we anticipate seeing our revenues be affected for sales tax, um, kind of estimating and obviously in March and April, that's gonna be impacted the most, uh, maybe only seeing about 25% of the revenues that we typically would. And then every month increasing that um, expectation, assuming that, you know, the shelter in place order will be lifted, businesses can get back to operating. So there we've used that approach as far as estimating the sales tax and places of eating tax. Um, going on into the next um, page is the general fund expenditure impact analysis. So once we knew we had approximate $1 million shortfall of expenditures, we were tasked at, you know, working with the department on doing a very thorough review of all of our expenditures um, to ensure we still could do a balanced budget and just kind of strip down to have a uh, truly operational budget, um, kind of eliminating the capital items and various discretionary items from the budget. So just at a very um, high level summary, below shows you the, for each department, um, the various cuts that were made, um, that, or reductions, I should say, that were made. Um, and most significantly would be the central services. There's the, that's where the transfers usually come out of to fund any surpluses that are available in the general fund typically get transferred into the capital projects funds for different capital improvements. That was significantly with the stormwater management fund. And then the other item is also the transfers to the information technology fund was significant. And 
all the travel training conferences um, for our, across all departments have been deferred, as well as various capital items in the police uh, department, including vehicle leasing, uh, vehicle purchases, uh, police ballistic shields, and then deferring various items of public works, including also the vehicle leasing and purchasing equipment replacement and the tree trimming was significant. Um, in addition to the 993,000 of expenditures, it is assumed that those salaries would also be frozen as of April 30th. And all of these items that we're speaking of, we have a very detailed thorough list that will be provided. Um, our, the idea is that these can be deferred and put on a wait list and reprioritize as the fiscal year 2021 progresses and we evaluate the impact on the budget. Um, you know, we start seeing there's a lag in this, you know, sales tax is obviously our biggest uh, impact. And with the delay in the, when we receive the sales tax information from the state of Illinois, um, it, we'll start seeing that result in June and July so we can make decisions, obviously see where our projections lie if they're, you know, if we need to adjust anything, but we can start prioritizing different expenditures as we move along. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Jerry. Um, we'll, we did the same analysis on the other funds um, and he can proceed and talk about the, the remaining funds. Okay, before you leave us, uh, Amy, for this mm -hmm. um, period, I wanna be sure uh, that all the trustees are up to speed. And if any of them have any questions at this time, uh, I'd invite anybody that has a question of Amy to ask it. Um, I have a question. Uh, this is Trustee Mutel. Um, so really, uh, first, we're not even out of the woods yet, but uh, I know this has uh, given a big blow to the village economy for 2020. When do you see yourself coming out of it, assuming that you know things start to get better after May? So, I mean, do you see yourself coming back uh, uh, May of next year or probably fall of next year? And I know I won't, I mean, it's it's hard to say, but uh, what do you think is your prediction? Um, and then Amy, before you, Amy, before you answer, um, uh, Anita, the other thing that um, I've given them um, instruction on is that the budget issues that are gonna be talked about tonight, um, they're going to come up again, at least in the, uh, uh, within the next 90 days again, so we know what we're doing um, because it's going to be very hard to project. Uh, but um, So this is going to be a constant item that we're going to be seeing on the agenda from time to time, so we stay current. But with that, Amy, go ahead and give your answer, please. Right. So I, just to, for sales tax, for instance, and, you know, and this was a, you know, kind of a joint collaboration between a you know an approach of what a lot of municipalities have been doing so the way we approach sales tax for example is you know looking back at the history with what we saw for the great recession you know we don't anticipate that we will be back at 100 percent by the end of this next fiscal year for example we've projected you know maybe we'll be at realizing 30% in May and maybe 35% in June and not even getting up to close to 85% in October. So I don't have like a, a real answer of when, you know, if I can't predict the future as far as when we anticipate it, but that's how our assumptions have worked that, you know, we don't even see us realizing 50% of the sales tax uh, after September. And that's just assuming that, you know, based on what we know now at this point in time, we don't, you know, obviously every day we get new updates from the, you know, the the governor and, you know, the Illinois Department of Public Health and their estimates. But, you know, it's, it's as Gary said, and we plan on doing a quarterly review and actually probably even monthly review of just where, where things are. Very good. Thank you. Any other trustees? Uh, just, a, just a comment, if I could. This is Trustee Francis. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so, like the mayor said, this will be a quarter. We're going to we plan on doing a performing a quarterly review of the budget to see where we're at, where we're going, what things have changed, and all of these expenditure cuts are deferred and put on a wait list. 
And at that time, the next quarter, whatever, the next time we talk about it, we can re revisit those ex potential expenditures and see if they're pertinent at that time. If we have the funding, if we don't have the funding, they'll stay on the wait list. So I think it's a good approach that we review this every three months and, and see where we're at. We can't, we can't put it off for another year. We have to look, look at it and this will be a moving budget, a rolling budget so that we can uh, proactively take into account the uh, current uh, fiscal situation that we're undergoing. Thank you. And Mayor Grasso, if I may, yes. um, I think that we've taken the approach of trying to create flexibility in this budget. Um, there's right. still room for uh, more cuts. There's still room for, for, uh, for uh, spending surplus if we have to, but we're not planning that now. We We've because primarily because we were able to balance it using our best analysis of revenues and and cutting what uh, what what we can in capital primarily. But the primary goal in going into this and looking at the big picture is to have flexibility because no one knows what it's going to be like. Uh, so we've got to take in that middle road. Um, you know, we, we haven't overreacted, but we haven't underreacted, we believe. And there's room for flexibility. And if we start seeing sales tax numbers and places of eating tax in July and August, uh, staff has been working on ideas on what, you know, we have the, our, this wait list that we can add if things go well. We also are keeping track uh, internally of what uh, other savings that we could try to find if, if absolutely necessary. So. We believe there's flexibility here in the big picture and that uh, we will be talking, as Trustee Francis says, we'll be back to you on a regular basis uh, reporting on how, how things are progressing. Um, okay, anybody else? Um, Joe, Tony, Al, is, yes, is Zach, I, Zach no. you have a question? Anybody have a question? Is Zach back on or not? I, I have a question. Uh, right. So I'm assuming we took a pretty conservative uh, approach to our anticipated revenues and expenses for the next fiscal year. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping and anticipating that the, our markets will start coming back, you know, in the next six months slowly. You know, I don't think it's going to be as a uh, uh, recovery, a, a slow recovery like we did after um, 08. Um, I think we'll we'll have a, a little bit of a quicker recovery. And I know Jerry's going to go on to some of the other ones, but regarding our debt service, have we uh, we asked for any relief on on our current debt that we have, or you know, I, and I'm, I'm guessing Jerry will kind of go over that in in the next few funds. Um, I don't know if he's going to go over it, but if he doesn't, we'll get you an answer. Um, okay. Okay. Has everybody that's have all the trustees have an opportunity to ask any questions at this uh, at this stage? Okay. Um, all right, Jerry, you're on. Okay. Uh, just to continue on, uh, Amy had given you like the you know the uh, summary of the nine hundred ninety three thousand uh, dollar you know budget reductions and wait wait list item. I am just going to go through uh, other funds uh, on the wait uh, that are on the wait list item uh, item list. Um, so on the motor fuel tax and the hotel motel tax, there's really um, you know no wait listed item. MFT uh, is just a pass through into capital improvements. You know it's restricted money. Um, hotel motel is a self sustaining fund with uh, its own source of revenues and programs. Uh, a big, uh, big item here is, is the capital improvement fund. Uh, we had, uh, we were tasked with, uh, you know, you know, trying to find a way to uh, make sure the, uh, you know, uh, road program is uh, included. So that is not on the wait list. However, uh, a lot of the other, uh, you know, building and maintenance uh, projects and uh, and some construction pro projects are on the wait list. Um, same way with the uh, uh, sidewalk and pathway fund. Uh, we just have. We have a couple of, there's some reserves still in there. Uh, so the, there's a couple of uh, recommendations to proceed. Um, 
you know, with the um, with a couple of projects, and then the uh, wait listed is the uh, Garfield Avenue connection. Uh, equipment replacements, just some uh, minor and uh, some uh, some equipment here uh, that Dave uh, had put on the list, and um, the uh, stormwater management. This uh, fund, uh, this had the uh, Elm Street culvert and uh, culvert replacement. This was uh, uh, primarily coming out of 100% out of uh, uh, general fund surplus uh, for uh, that we had planned to put in. So that's kind of on the list. Down to debt service, we don't have any waitlisted items. And to Tony's point, you know, those are <coughs> just a bond issue, and um, I'm not really familiar with any forgiveness on debt. I'll, I'll double check into you just to get you a more definitive answer on that one. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, sure. Water and sewer funds. Uh, once, go, go ahead. Oh, no, good question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that is a good question. We should uh, we should make sure that we're Good with our um, <clears throat> with our debt service, uh, or what our alternatives are. So, see that up for the next meeting for sure. Sure, we'll do. Yeah. Uh, water and sewer funds; those are uh, like enterprise funds, so uh, you know they're self-sustaining, sustaining also. And then uh, on the information technology fund, uh, we had to pull back all of the uh, IT fund uh, transfers out of the general fund. This is just a uh, you know, fund future equipment replacement and uh, some operations. Um, it was kind of a choice between, you know, technology and roads, and it was kind of an easy choice, I guess. Um, so we kind of put that on hold. And uh, there are some uh, projects uh, also on hold, uh, police facility security system. Uh, at the budget workshop, there was a, um, a request to reduce the $50,000 uh, broadcast upgrade for the village hall and police. Um, the, uh, the other half, we went, we took that down to 50,000 to 25,000. Uh, the other half was more of uh, hooking up uh, the two facilities uh, to do recordings uh, at either side and some lobby overflow, overflow and stuff like that. The 25,000 will concentrate, you know, solely on improving the uh, the audio, which we've been struggling with in the boardroom. And uh, the uh, tablet upgrades, uh, there was just kind of uh, on our discussion, a lack of need of that. So we just took that out. And then uh, finally, uh, on the waitlist item, police pension fund, uh, we've been, you know, talking about, you know, uh, what what else can we do for the pension fund? So we put, you know, the $100,000, uh, you know, a year uh, uh, co extra contribution to the pension fund. Sure. So just to kind of wrap this up, uh, you, you guys already talked about most of the uh, post-COVID uh, post -COVID recovery plan, uh, you know, just a flexible process to kind of recover from this situation. Um, you know, you want to want to be able to make decisions in real time, you know, based on current information. It's a real struggle right now to do that. Um, and then, you know, be have the, uh, you know, nimbleness to, you know, depending on if we see a worsening and improving or worsening environment to make more timely decisions, you know, you know deeper cuts as Doug had mentioned, uh, or, you know, the, the reverse. Uh, so, uh, in, you know, right now we have to, you know, get a budget approved by uh, uh, April 27th, that's the next uh, meeting. So uh, this is a stripped down budget with only uh, operational items that uh, maintains just the current levels during this emergency. And it mentioned about the wait list, everything's on there for future discussion. Uh, um, you know, a sal a freeze on salaries, training, new equipment, new programs, everything we talked about. So just the process that was brief briefly discussed also. Um, you know, as we go through the years, uh, you know, all these wait list items are prioritized and then, uh, you know, bring to the board either monthly or quarterly for discussion and approval. And finance will continue to use our models and you know, try to provide you the most up-to-date uh, uh, re uh, revenue forecast, uh, you know, uh, weekly or, or, or monthly too, as the data becomes available. And then, uh, you know, it comes to a point where the revenue picture improves or there's a decision to re uh, use reserves. Uh, this is a budget, men, uh, budget amendment process can be done and put these items back into the budget. So basically, as I think Gary said, we'd be, we'd be trying to budget all year, trying to, you know, recover from uh, this event. So, yeah, a lot of, you know, a lot of questions, a lot of unknowns. How long will it last? What, you know, what the impact would be? How quick we will recover? Uh, I think this kind of recovery plan will give us a, uh, 
the village the uh, ability to use our strong financial resources in a thoughtful and flexible manner and just try to make the best decision with the best data in, in real time and kind of okay. move to, uh, from the pre-pandemic pre budget to the post-pandemic recovery budget. All right. Thank you. Um, so first of all, any questions of any of the trustees? I have a quick, I have a quick sure. question. Sure, Anita, go ahead. Okay, so um, I've heard from other sources um, that you know the property casualty equipment and vehicle insurers they're giving discounts because they have a same experience at this time. So if if uh, you could look into that and see if there are any discounts available. Okay, sure. good point. Gary, I do. I have uh, one uh, comment. Tony, go ahead, or Thank Joe. You. I have one question for, Jer for Jerry. When can we expect the budget, like a, a budget this week, to take a look at it, the full budget, rather than just, I appreciate everything and I got cut out, my computer decided to uh, restart. Yippee. But when can we expect <laughs> a full budget? Murphy's Law. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah this week, right, Doug? I think we were going to get it out this week. Yeah, go ahead. Doug. Uh, we have to publish a legal notice for a public hearing on April 27th, and uh, that has to be a minimum of 10 days before approval, and that's, that will be in the newspaper this week, and the hard copy uh, final draft will be available, and we'll have, uh, have it uh, available as well by the end of this week. So all the trustees will get a hard copy revised. Um, by law, we have to, I believe, keep it. Uh, <clears throat> we have to have it on on file, open for the public. But I think we're going to leave it at the police station. Is that is that the idea? Doug? That's that's the plan, right? <laughs> have it at the police station because they're they're open and manned. Okay. Um, so yeah, all this will come out. Um, the the other thing that you should note um, is. Um, as you all well know, we have these reserves and we have enough in reserves that if we actually need to, um, and the trustees and the board will have some real options. Uh, say, for example, the HVAC system, which is a, about $175,000 item, if that, that really does go um, at the Village Hall, um, we're confident that it will not, but it could. Um, we would at least have the funds uh, to make sure we could operate the village hall once we're back to normal and the HVAC system would work. So the bright news, if any, is that in a crisis situation, unlike the state of Illinois, for example, the village of Burr Ridge does in fact have solid reserves that it could lean on uh, almost exclusively if we wanted to and fund almost everything. Um, I, I asked them not to take that approach now because that is always an option we we could have uh, based on an item by item uh, uh, basis as we go forward. So what you'll see this week in the budget will be you know a, an operational budget in a crisis. But under but look at those reserves and understand that um, if worse gets worse, we do have the ability uh, to pivot and use some of our money in reserve. And uh, I uh, intend to bring the budget as a general proposition back to the board on a continuing basis so that you have information to make decisions on. So my, uh, my only additional comment is you know, to avoid the confusion on whether or not to get updated quarterly or monthly, I think we should be updated at least monthly. And maybe you know, with the mayor's approval, we put an item on the agenda on either the first or the second meeting every month of where we stand with the COVID budget versus our original budget or something along those lines so that we can kind of watch. And I know that the budget moves on a seasonal basis, so it may not be particularly accurate, you know, of, of, of what the budget should be, let's say in the spring versus the summer, uh, but I, I'd like to stay updated. Um, yeah, um, no problem. Um, I think in absolutely. the short term, in the short term for the next couple of meetings, uh, certainly in the May and June, um, we will have the budget, uh, at least a portion of the budget on the agenda at each time. And of course, if any um, uh, trustee wants to know anything about the budget in advance, what we would ask is if you have some questions 
let us know in advance so we can get it on the agenda and tee it up and get you um, the correct answers. So at any time, of course, um, you can call uh, me or Doug uh, or Jerry and, and ask for anything you, you need for, uh, for budget purposes. But we will keep it on the agenda at least for the next few um, meetings. It's a good suggestion. Thank you. Um, have, are all the trustees on and do any of the trustees have any questions uh, on this item, um, 8A, the update to the budget? This is uh, Trustee Franzese. I have a couple questions and then a comment, please. Okay. So uh, if we could go back to the Stormwater Management Fund, can you pull it up, Terry? Or Doug? Or Brad. Mm -hmm. Or Brad. Or Brad. Or Brad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, one second, sorry. Here. There we go, thank you. Uh, so waitlisted is the $52,000 Elm Street Culvert Engineering. That's the engineering services required to engineer and design the culvert replacement project. Uh, what's the duration of that engineering? Do you happen to know off the top of your head? Uh, Dave Preisig, you want to answer that? Yeah, this is Dave. Um, we had estimated that we would be in engineering for about three months originally, uh, husting it through in order to get it constructed over summer. Um, okay. Obviously, with all the uh, delays in other agencies, we knew that was going to be pushed back. But um, right. okay, so let's 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 assume the worst case here, and that the culvert fails without replace without notice or without any indication. It just fails suddenly. Uh, and then we have no engineering in place. We have no drawings or documents. We can't go out to bid. We can't really uh, get started on the project. And so we risk a situation there with the residents and the, and the stormwater where it's not being managed properly. So I would suggest we find a way to put that engineering back in to the budget and that we continue, uh, we continue that and allow that engineering to take place and we can put it off to the side when it's finished, put it off to the side until we're ready to actually have, have we have the funds in place to replace that culvert. Yeah, it's a suggestion of mine. Yeah, that, that's a good suggestion. And Doug, um, we should at I least. Feel, I feel nervous. I feel nervous about not having anything in place, and we could really get caught with our caught in a bind without um, having the engineering done. And I agree failed. with Trustee Francis on that. Yeah, and, and and Doug, just look into it. And Dave, would you look into whether or not we would have to spend the full fifty-two thousand? Could we get to a level of confidence um, yeah. uh, and be mobile if if we do have to act on the culvert replacement? Have a sufficient engineering uh, documents in place so we can move aggressively if we have to. We will. We can do that. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. And then and then my comment was I just wanted to thank staff, um, Doug, Evan, Jerry, Amy, all the department heads for taking a close look at their budget uh, and, and seeing really what could we trim to make this budget work so that we can continue to provide the services we need to provide to our residents and maintain a safe village. So uh, hats off to you folks for doing an excellent job these last few weeks and really taking a cold look at everything and questioning everything if it really needs to spend the dollars on. So thanks again. Okay. okay. Anybody else? Okay. <clears throat> um, that'll take us to 8B, consideration of tourism recovery program. Evan, Doug? Uh, yes, I'd like to uh, have uh, Evan um, address that. Um, the program that the staff has been working with Mayor Grasso and Trustee Francis on and uh, introduce Evan Walter to go, kind of go over that. Thanks, Doug. Anybody else? So as stated, this is a uh, this is titled the Tourism Recovery Program. Uh, this is part of the village's efforts to uh, really get at the economic effects of the pandemic. Um, I would say the uh, the reason behind this program is really to make sure that we have an economy after the pandemic subsides. Um, certainly we understand that the economy is somewhat artificially closed by the state right now. The hotels are essentially not open. A lot of non-essential quote non-essential businesses are not open right now, um, but there are a lot of businesses in the village that have been uh, 
strong and longtime supporters of the village, uh, either through uh, sponsoring events or, or simply being sales tax payers that help provide for all the services that the residents enjoy. And this program was put together to try and help ensure that a lot of those businesses that are truly local in nature can survive the pandemic and be open after it subsides. Uh, again, we're calling it the Tourism Recovery Program, and it functions by providing one-time grants to eligible hotels and restaurant and retail businesses to provide them the basic working capital to pay rent, payroll, and other core payables. As you can see on the screen, it's $15,000 for eligible hotels and $7,500 for restaurant, retail, and other store advice businesses. Um, really the core of what we tried to do here is identify businesses uh, that really provide the basics for uh, our civic life downtown, as well as make sure that our hotel motel fund is, in, is ensured to be full and healthy on a annual basis. So by including the hotels in this program, we're able to use the entire, uh, we're able to fund the entire program through the hotel motel program. Um, that takes it out of the general fund and into that fund, which is generally speaking, promoting overnight tourism as its sole purpose, except for the capital needs that may otherwise come out of there. There's some basic requirements here uh, that we have put together. We've tried to make it straightforward to identify really businesses that are local to Burr Ridge. Either their only location is in Burr Ridge or one of their focuses is on Burr Ridge. And we've tried to do that by having smaller businesses with less locations, uh, less revenue, uh, people who really, uh, this is their livelihood. Um, this is not part of a corporate item except for the hotels. Um, these really are businesses that represent Burr Ridge when you think of our Burr Ridge downtown business community. Um, again, in total, 20 businesses are eligible for participation in the program based on the requirements on your screen. Um, there is a full list later in the board packet that is available to be reviewed. Um, as proposed, the program would cost $210,000 and be paid entirely out of the revenues and fund balance of the hotel motel fund in the current fiscal year. Uh, again, we're using hotel motel dollars because uh, this is funding a lot of our tourism programs, keeping hotels alive and well, uh, making sure that the restaurants that are supporting hotels and hotels that are supporting restaurants in good shape uh, to get through the pandemic. Um, so when again, we come out of the pandemic, we're able to have a pretty good downtown economy that so many residents and travelers uh, have come to know, expect, and enjoy uh, of the village for so many years. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Doug and Mayor. I'll be here to answer any questions. Uh, go ahead, Doug. Uh, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to briefly touch on how this is being paid for. Uh, as Evan said, it's paid for entirely out of the hotel fund. Those are restricted dollars, hotel dollars, only 25% of the hotel tax fund revenue can be used for capital. And this does not affect the 25%. We're still uh, proposing to transfer uh, the maximum allowed to the capital programs of the village. Uh, we are able to, to uh, generate revenue for this program. Primarily, about half of it was by cutting the marketing program uh, for the hotels. We ended that program at the direction of Mayor Grasso at the end of, or middle of March when the pandemic hit. Uh, didn't seem to be a real need to market hotels that are primarily closed. Um, and so we were, saved some money by uh, cutting that tourism marketing program. And now we're transferring uh, those dollars to this program. Uh, and those savings along with existing uh, money that's in the fund uh, will pay for this. And again, I want to emphasize that this does not impact the general fund. These dollars cannot be used for anything except tourism. And we believe uh, uh, that this is the best use of those dollars uh, at this time. Okay, uh, thanks, Doug. Um, any questions from any of the trustees? I just have a comment. I think this is in excellent program to show our commitment to uh, not only the residents of Burridge, but the businesses located here in Burridge. So um, can I ask a question? So I uh, and that's it. Go ahead. Okay. Someone had a question? Uh, yes, I am a listening uh, concerned family member for a citizen over at Harvester Place. OK, 
Can you like, can you just give us your name and where you where what village you live in? And where I am. My name is Larry Galateo, and I live in Willow Springs. I grew up in Burr Ridge, and my uh, family still lives in Burr Ridge. And I have a immediate family member that is residing in Harvester Place. Um, okay. Does this have anything to do? And we certainly want to hear your question, Larry. But um, maybe wait for public comment. This isn't oh, about. I'm sorry. Of course. Because it, it's it's not about this program that that we're talking about, the tourism program, right? It is not. I will okay. wait. Okay. Then, if you could wait, please wait till public comment. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Um, any trustees have any questions yet about? the the recovery tourism recovery program um i just wanted to add a uh, great job um uh, finding a solution within uh the hotel motel um hotels and motels um this will be a shot in the arm uh the fifteen thousand for the hotels and seventy five thousand for the businesses and i like the way how you managed to find the dollars from the hotel motel fund um, and uh, I'm sure you're going to watch the situation as it emerges um, and how these hotels do. But uh, I just wanted to congratulate you on uh, first uh, stopping the marketing program at the right time and conserving those dollars so that you can use it to revive the hotels and motels. Thank you. Um, anyone else? All right. Um, and I just want you to know that um, Devil's a little bit in the detail. I have been in uh, close contact with Bob Garber on the County Line Square side, the owner, uh, and Ramsey Hassan, the uh, one of the owners on the uh, Village Center side. Uh, we've run this list of um, businesses, by the way, by both of them, and they were very grateful uh, for the program, and they thought we actually picked the ones that, if they were left to pick the businesses, they would have picked these. Uh, and as it worked out, it was 10 on each side. Um, we didn't we didn't strive to do that, but it happened to be 10 businesses on each side. So they are generally uh, on board. Uh, the devil in the detail part is I'm trying to still work with them and the individual business owners to decide um, by keeping our administration as low as possible, administering this program, what do we do with the 7,500 to make sure that a, a substantial portion of it goes at least to the CAM charges, the, the bills that uh, Garber and Ramsey will have to pay, that there'll still be enough money for payroll to those that each of these businesses choose uh, they de deem as essential uh, employees, and three, uh, that they pay some of their own vendors um, because obviously businesses have to pay their vendors just as uh, we uh, tonight uh, chose to pay our vendors um, when um, five of you out of six approved paying our own venue, uh, vendors in the time of need. So um, I um, I will, with staff and uh, um, Trustee Francis, uh, come up with how we're going to divvy this money out without telling them exactly how to spend it. Um, I just wanted to make sure you understood that there are some details yet to work out with this program if you should pass it tonight. So with that, is there any, uh, has anybody called in, Doug, uh, for any comment on this? Uh, we'll have to open it up for calls, but uh, I did get one email uh, on this subject, which I will uh, read uh, right now uh, as soon as I find it. Okay, well, open up the line if, if that is what we're supposed to do. Open up the line for anybody who wants to comment uh, and the recover the tourism recovery program. Yes, and while we're waiting for those calls, I'll read the one email I got on this subject. It was from uh, Elena Galinsky, and she says, Dear Burridge Village Trustees and Mayor, I do not understand why the village is considering allocating resources from the village budget to hotels and retail businesses when there are federal and state programs already in place to assist small businesses with COVID-19 impacts. This is not a proper use of our tax dollars, especially when that very fund will be negatively impacted by the lack of tax received from those same businesses. 
So now not only will the village not receive those taxes due to COVID-19, it will be giving away the taxes that were already received. And uh, that Ms. Kalinsky also commented for regular public comment, but I'll save those for the open comment section at the end of the meeting. Okay. Well, we did also talk about that. Um, and in fact, um, the money was um, available in the hotel motel fund. Uh, this is the, I believe, the appropriate way to use it. Um, there is certainly no guarantee that these businesses are going to get this money, nor when it's going to be uh, in their pockets. And these are the types of shots in the arms that I did go to the businesses and the business owners, uh, which will carry them through um, the very acute, difficult times that we're in right now, which is April and May. Uh, and so um, this is supplemental to that, that program that uh, might come forward by the state or federal government. And uh, I believe it is the appropriate use of the hotel motel fund because uh, otherwise we would have to spend it on advertising and things that I think should take a back seat to the integrity of the village center and, and county line square. Uh, if those businesses go under that directly uh, negatively would impact uh, Burr Ridge and the property values in Burr Ridge. Um, so out of an abundance of caution, I think that money should be spent on our businesses and invested in our communities. Anybody else um, have any uh, comment on the email? I do. I, I just would like to reiterate and be clear that the program will cost $210,000 and be paid entirely out of revenues and fund balances of the hotel motel fund in fiscal year 2019-2020. That is correct. Yeah, just I just want to reiterate that this right. is not coming out of our general fund. Correct. Thank you. It is not coming out of our general fund and it's also and thank you for that point Tony. It's money we already have, and it's already the, the 1920 budget. It isn't our hotel motel money from 2021. I have a comment. Um, is that um, somebody calling in? Yes, a resident. Okay. Yes, can you tell us who you are? Christine Formansky. Hi, Christine, go ahead. Hi. I'm just wondering, you know, why are we giving them a lifeline when so many people, I'm out of work, my daughter's out of work. I mean, people are out of work here and you're freely wanting to bail out these high-end restaurants that charge outrageous prices, plus they are doing carryout. I understand that, you know, maybe they're suffering in some way because of their, with their employees, but I still feel that there should be some recourse that they first still go through steps to first apply for these grants for the relief from the government. I mean, why are we just right away throwing this money at them and like, oh, hey, it's okay. I mean, you know, the thing is, is that most Burridge residents don't go to Burridge because it's the expensive amount of uh, that it costs to go out. So, it, you know, you're generalizing and saying, oh, it's going to give a bridge a shot in the arm. But, you know, the residents are more concerned about keeping the water bill down and not being charged outrageous for that over and over. And I first, and how about a re, they pay it back? They get a loan from the government, then they should pay back the money. Why are we depleting, regardless if it's hotel motel tax? Well, Christine, we can't use that money. We can only specifically use it for the promotion of tourism, 75% of it. Um, and um, and that is money we already have. And uh, I do believe uh, that it's appropriately being spent on the smaller businesses. Just to clarify a point, this is not going for, for any of the, what you refer to, I believe, as a high-end restaurants. It is not going to Topaz. It is not going to... Um, uh, Eddie Merlot's or Capri or any of the uh, big restaurants. It is going to the small shops that are in the uh, County Line Square and in the Village Center 
and, and which are the small shops that, that form the backbone of those two centers. So I think this is exactly the time that it has to be used and it's an appropriate use of this money, which is not our general fund money. It's money that we already have. We can't give it to you in terms of water bills or anything else. It has to be spent promoting Burr Ridge. That's the hotel motel tax uh, basis. And so um, it, it is being used on the appropriate businesses, not any of the high end businesses, not any of the businesses that are national or, or part of chains. These are the small mom pot type businesses that we have in Burr Ridge. So will the, will the village have a list of people that the funds have gone to and how much they've received so the residents can see that? Yes, it's in the, it's, it's in part of the uh, agenda and it is, um, it'll be available, but for example, um, uh, it is, uh, and I don't know every one of these businesses, but it, it is Patty's, uh, the breakfast place. It is ASI. It is the China King. It is Vince's Flower Shop. It is the Salon Hype. It is Capri Express, the takeout place. It is La Cabanita and Dow. It is the County Wine Merchant uh, and the Hen House uh, on the County Line Square side on the Village Center side, it is um, uh, Kima Aveda. It is Bow Box, the flower store. It is Master Cuts. It is the Design Bar, Peak Running, Kelly Cauley, Sticks and Stones, Two Bostons, Walk and Fire. And the only one outside of those two centers is Falco's Pizza uh, off of uh, Route 83. Those are the 20 or 21 stores. Okay. Okay, that Thank was you. just all I need. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Is Thank there you. anybody else that's called in, Doug? Yes, I have. <clears throat> okay, identify yourself. Go ahead. My name is Larry Galateo. I grew up in Burr Ridge. I have a family member that is in Harvester Place. Uh, not financial question, but before I ask my question, I just want to, you know, express my gratitude and that you are serving in this time, and thank you very much. Thank you. Um, there is uh, a situation at Harvester Place with, where the obvious COVID-19 is hit there, and I just want to make sure that you are aware. I, I don't know if the corporation has been transparent with you because their leadership has um, okay. inside the facility backed off and, and went home and, and they've left uh, the, the facility to be run by many subordinates. So I just want to make sure that you are aware and that um, there are several confirmed cases and, and that's all I want to say. I just want to let you know and I hope that you will keep an eye on them because I don't trust the corporation. My grandmother is in there and she is also ill and confirmed it, it tested positive. Um, Larry, um, I, I I won't say every day, but just about every third day, I've been uh, in contact with each of the four senior centers that we have in Burr Ridge. Um, I'm not allowed to know um, uh, uh, who has it, but uh, I am told uh, how many uh, residents might have it and what they're doing. It's my understanding that all four centers are practicing um, and following all the guidelines, uh, which includes um, uh, regular fever checks of the residents, uh, isolation of anyone who is suspected or has tested positive. Um, as to the staff, they are checking temperatures of the staff uh, at the beginning of each uh, round and also at the midpoint of their shift. Uh, and um, uh, you know, I, I'm getting the census count. I don't know of any specific outbreak, but I do know that there are several um, uh, residents in in uh, Harvester Place in one or two of the other uh, senior centers that have um, positive patients, but it's my understanding that they are following all protocols. Um, but if you have anything more specific or any other questions you want me to ask of Harvester Place or anyone else, please just um, let me know. You can find my contact information 
on the, on the website, but I am particularly concerned with the fact that Burr Ridge does have four senior centers, and so far um, there hasn't been any massive outbreak. Um, I believe as of today's count, <clears throat> there are um, is it is it 30 or so on uh, the DuPage side, and there's been six on the Cook side. I don't know the breakdown between uh, senior residents at centers or um, or non seniors uh, in the village, but I'm fairly confident that all of our senior centers are doing the best jobs they can for their residents and staff. All right, thank you, Mayor, for your question. I just wanted to uh, alert you, and I, I hope you keep vigilance on the situation in these facilities as it can really. No I, I, <laughs> quickly. I'm, I'm, we, we are trying, believe me. And the chief also um, is kept up to date. Um, and um, I, I know he's on. And chief Madden, is there anything you want to add? Okay. Mayor, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, Chief. No, you've um, you've actually, we keep in touch with him on a weekly basis also. So, and I know that you are also doing the same, but you've uh, pretty much covered everything. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> All right, has anybody else called in, Doug? Hello. Hello. Are we into public comments? No, not yet, um, but we're, we're getting there very, very All shortly. Right. If you'd hold on. Um, okay, is there anybody else who's calling in about the uh, tourism recovery program? All right, then um, can I get a motion to approve um, the tourism recovery program as discussed? So moved. Second. Any discussion by any of the trustees? Any discussion from the public? Anybody want to call in on this and one more time? Okay, roll call, please. Trustee Baveza? Yes. Trustee Mattal? Yes. Trustee Model? Trustee Francis? Yes. Trustee Schiappa? Yes. Trustee Snyder? Can we, Joe? Zach, are you hearing us? Joe, Joe is on. Uh, Zach is also on. He's muted. He can unmute himself. Yes, sorry. Joe, was that yes. Joe? Was that Trustee Snyder? Yes, Trustee Snyder. Yes. Thank okay. you, Trustee and Model. Mayor, has he been muted, or did he mute himself? He he has the capability. He has muted himself. If he dial star six he can unmute himself but he's showing muted right now uh you've had me muted the whole meeting every time i've tried to unmute myself you've muted me i'm voting no on this program it's a horrible horrible wayward program okay um the vote is five one five one it, uh, motion passes all right that takes us to item nine public comment um, Jerry, uh, excuse me, Doug, you said there was public comment. Hello. Hello. Yes. Can I speak? Yeah. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is uh, Carol Novak. Okay. Okay. I'd like to um, ask how come we don't have a term limit for trustees? Uh, I feel Paveza has been there too long, even though he brags about it. Um, also, when he gave uh, Gigi, who is a felon, his a liquor license, uh, was he a liquor commissioner at the time?
Ms. Novak, uh, Mr. Preveza, Trustee Preveza was the acting liquor commissioner presiding at that hearing. There was a full hearing um, and that was done in 2011. Um, and um, there has been a liquor license ever since for Mr. Revito since 2011. He went through the, all the processes required by law. The fact that he was a felon uh, did not disqualify him from holding a liquor license if he met uh, the uh, guidelines and the legal requirements of the state of Illinois uh, that set forth the process for rehabilitation, which he went through and uh, proved his, uh, his case at the time. And uh, he was given a liquor license and he has had a liquor license ever, ever since. Now, as okay. to term limits, um, th that's something the board um, we're a non-home rule community. Uh, I believe that would require some kind of referendum. I'm not sure why the history of Burr Ridge, which has been in existence since 1956, has not had a term limit. There's no term limit for trustees uh, or the village president or mayor. It's something um, that uh, um, you can come in and advocate for, and um, but there is no requirement under law or under our ordinance for term limits. All right, thank you. Thank you, Carol. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Uh, Richard, Richard Morton speaking, a Burr Ridge resident since 1989. Trustee model was unknown to me until Mayor Mickey Straub appointed him to the position of trustee. And he then ran in an uncontested election that results in him being trustee today. Soon after his appointment, allegations that he interfered with another government body surfaced, and those actions led to lawsuits, considerable public outrage, and in my opinion, achieved a worse outcome had he not interfered. Then came sterogenics and ethylene oxide. His initial response was to disdain and dismiss as a non-problem, even opining the increased rates of cancer in Willowbrook could be related to women drinking alcohol. I have seen a video on YouTube featuring Governor Rauner and trustee model touring his family's business. They stopped to admire a part the family business makes for knee replacements. Presumably, such a device would need sterilization before implantation. Does trustee model recognize the potential conflict of interest as this device must include sterilization at some point and any disruption of the sterilization industry would ultimately or could ultimately affect his family's business? Additional. There are several examples of lawsuits filed in the circuit court of the 18th Judicial Circuit District and the Court of Chancery of the state of Delaware, all naming trustee model as a defendant. All these lawsuits have similar qualities that come down to trustee models actions and behavior, including the alleged misuse of funds and breach of fiduciary duty. While other elected officials and village staff were neutral on adopting home rule, trustee model took the opposite approach and loudly proclaimed how disastrous home rule would be. And as far as I can tell, provided few facts supporting his allegations. In any event, now in the shadow of COVID-19 crisis, its failure may handicap our village's ability to recover quickly. Then concerning trustees model behavior at these meetings, his language, his gestures, his demeanor, including name calling and coarse language evidenced again tonight, all delivered in what I perceive as being in an agitated state with a raised voice, rapidly speaking, frankly intimidates me. It reminds me of the day trustee model unannounced and without invitation knocked on my door and invited him, himself into my home. 
the reason was to gain support in his quest for being elected mayor. And he told me how we were alike and could be friends. Trustee model, let me affirm for all, we are not alike. We do not share similar values. We could not be more different. In my opinion, trustee model's continued presence as Burr Ridge trustee is disruptive, non-productive, and is harmful to Burr Ridge. I ask that you resign your position tonight. Thank you for your time. Good evening. All right, anybody else call in, Doug? Doug, has anybody else called in? I, I think that's it. Okay, that's it all on the call in, but I do have a couple of emails uh, that I received. All right. That I'll read into the record. Um, uh, one uh, is from uh, Christine Fermansky, and I don't think this is anything on the agenda, but I'll, I'll read it. It says, what percentage do the police officers pay into IMRF? What percentage is the village contributing? I would like to know which Burridge di business didn't pay $1.5 million to the state. And that, that is the, the extent of uh, those the, that email. Then uh, going back to another email I'd gotten uh, earlier, I read a portion of an email from Elena Galinsky regarding the uh, tourism recovery program. Second half of her email was for general public comment and her email states, I'd also like to comment on Mr. Grasso's use of the Nixel public safety alerts for chatty COVID-19 updates. Our public safety is being undermined by the spamming of advisory messages. This system used to be used for actual emergency alerts, such as in-progress crime and dangerous weather or road conditions affecting citizen security. I encourage Mr. Grasso to use the next door platform instead of the police emergency system platform. Elena Galinsky, Burridge resident. Okay, any any other public comment? <clears throat> this is all the emails that I received. All right. Um, okay, that'll take us to 10 reports and communications from village officials. Do I'd like any? to say something. Yes, yes, Anita. Um, as everyone knows, this is the month of or the time when everyone needs to do the census. I want to report that 60% of the Burridge residents have filled out the census. So yay, that's very nice. Uh, but that still uh, leaves the fact that we still need 40% to fill out the census. Um, we are 8% higher than the state average. Uh, which is good, but I would encourage everyone to talk to their friends, families, neighbors um, to do the census online or, or via mail. Both of those options are very suitable. Um, earlier in the month, I received some emails. Evan received some questions from residents because... <coughs> <coughs> Okay. Okay. Want a glass of water? <coughs> yeah, I just swallowed. Uh, some of some of these addresses were reported as Willowbrook, um, but if you look at the last four digits of your zip code, um, that'll tell you it's Burridge. So, since the postcard has gone out, uh, we've had uh, fewer phone calls, so that is not that much of a concern. But if anyone is concerned, please call us. Um, once again, please call your friends, families, neighbors to fill out the census. Thank you. Thank you, Nita. Any, any other village officials have any pub, any comments, reports? Do we, have you? Anyone else? I, I have a question for Anita. Uh, do we know when the, the deadline is for the census? 
I believe the deadline earlier was like September or October, but I wouldn't be surprised if they push it out because I don't think people are going door to door to do the okay. census as they have in the past. Okay. 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 Thank you, Anita. But I, I will keep you posted. Yeah. Thank once you. Once we hear something. This is Evan. It's August 14th at this time. And this, they haven't pushed it out yet? No, but I think there's a pretty great expectation it will be pushed back a few months. Right, because August 14 must be the original time, right? Correct. Right, right. So yeah, I would expect it to be pushed out. Okay. And just one more comment about the census, please. This is yeah. Jesse Francis. Yes. So uh, expanding on what Anita, what Anita was mentioning about the zip code plus four, the last four digits, those last four digits <coughs> tells the Census Bureau that you live in Burr Ridge, that the resident is responding lives in Burr Ridge, and that the information you complete on the I census form will be counted towards Burr Ridge and not some other community. Thank you, uh, Trustee Francis. I don't know why I had a choking fit at that time, but That's I okay. apologize I was trying for to, that. No, no, I was trying to help out. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good tag team there. That's that's great. Thank you. Um, any other trustees have any other public comment, reports, or communications? Okay, I just have a couple. Um, I did circulate um, a um, code, a, a draft code of conduct. Several of you have asked that the village consider passing a code of conduct for um, village officials, for department heads, um, and, and volunteers, appointed volunteers to committees and commissions. Um, uh, I, I have. I'll circulate it. Uh, I'll make sure you have another copy of it. I need Mike Durkin's input next week, um, but uh, please expect this to be on the agenda for April 27th for your consideration to pass and approve a, um, a code of conduct for public officials, department heads, and appointed volunteers. Um, I uh, declared uh, state of emergency in Burr Ridge uh, a couple of weeks ago. I, my intent is to do the same again tomorrow, uh, which will only be in effect uh, until the April 27th meeting. Um, that does give a lot of flexibility or more flexibility to Dave Presick and Chief uh, Madden vis-a-vis um, uh, -vis our contracts uh, with our employees uh, so that they can properly staff the village in this time of crisis. Um, it, it, does, it gives the mayor no other uh, powers. Um, the only other power that the mayor has in an emergency as currently written is that the mayor has spending authority up to $100,000. There's been no need uh, for me to do that at this time, nor do I see any need to do that in the next two weeks. Um, when we get back to normal, we probably should look at that ordinance to see um, for future um, village presidents or mayors whether or not um, he or she should have any additional powers. I, I, I don't know what other villages have, but um, all I know is it's very, um, it's a very compact uh, 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 ordinance, and it only allows for spending up to $100,000, which would not uh, even cover two, uh, wouldn't even cover one payroll. Uh, in the village as it currently stands. Um, also, uh, Chief Madden, I've asked you to just give a, a summary report at this time as to uh, the security in the village and how you see things uh, progressing and uh, the status on your PPE. Mayor, our uh, personal <coughs> protection equipment, the PPEs, uh, we've we've got a sufficient stock at the at this time, and uh, we're also waiting for replenishment through the DuPage Office of uh, Emergency Management. Uh, we've already gotten two uh, uh, replenishments from that office. We inventory it daily, our PPEs and also our disinfecting uh, products, uh, but we're doing okay with uh, with our stock at the time at this time. We've had uh, we've had complaints on from residents reporting social distancing violations, mostly in the uh, playgrounds throughout uh, the community in both park districts. But uh, I've worked with both directors uh, in Pleasantdale Park District and Burridge Park District, and they've cordoned off those areas. And and we uh, we haven't uh, the complaints have 
practically went down to zero. So uh, everything's going good on that end. Um, as I reported previously, due to a, a generous donation by a Burridge resident, um, he, he donated disinfecting equipment and product to our public works department for, for use village wide. And what, the, what it is is disinfecting solution and sprayers. And it allows uh, our cars, our fleet to be disinfected on a weekly basis along with uh, uh, the police department. So that, that helps a lot. We're, we're trying to keep everything uh, super clean for the safety of the officers. Uh, as a, and also, as I reported uh, last week, we had our one officer return to duty and he tested negative, which we were very concerned about that. So um, everything is going well. We participating in numerous conference calls on a weekly basis. Uh, we're, we're constantly uh, updating our protocols on, on how to keep these our officers safe. And, um, and, um, and we're also uh, in a conference call on a weekly basis, actually three times a week with the state police director. He holds a conference call three times a week with all the police chiefs in the state of Illinois. And that also keeps us up to date on all the, um, uh, the, the changes occurring almost on a daily basis in different areas. So, um, Chief, can I ask you about um, the cooperation with our neighbors, um, what the interaction is with Willowbrook, Hinsdale, Willow Springs, Western Springs, Indian Head Park, et cetera? Uh, cooperation is excellent, as always. There's one thing DuPage County does and, and our neighbors on the Cook County side. Mutual aid is fantastic. Um, I've been working for the last five weeks, actually, with uh, our neighboring police chiefs. Uh, we all share a radio. Uh, we're on the same radio band. So what we developed was mutual aid plans just in case uh, we have officers that are exposed in quarantine. It is possible to lose a whole shift to quarantine and um, we've set up contingency plans on how to deal with that if that occurs. We uh, we have a document that uh, we keep track of uh, everybody's uh, sick leave. We, we take an inventory of sick leave on a daily basis and uh, we're watching out for that and ready to institute that mutual aid plan if needed. Great. Uh, any trustees have any questions of the chief? No. All right, um, and just my closing comment for tonight is um, I, um, I note that it appears that we are beginning to flatten the curve. I suppose that's a term no one ever heard of uh, even three months ago. Um, I, like you, are following uh, the progress in New York, in Louisiana, uh, in the rest of the country. Um, in Illinois, of course, and in our local area, it does appear that the stay at home order and the social distancing and the frequent hand washing is is paying dividends. I can only ask all of you to make sure um, we continue to row the boat in the right direction and encourage our residents in this time of need to to follow the governor's orders and to stay home. And I commend all the volunteers. Uh, we've had so many people in Burridge uh, step up. Uh, I've noted that in my uh, afternoon uh, message every time, and I'm sure there'll be more. Um, we are a very special place, and it's because of all of you and, and how you uh, react in a time of crisis. Um, nothing um, defines us more than how you act in a time of crisis. And so I thank all of you for your support. I can't tell you how much um, uh, Trustee Francis, uh, Doug, and Evan have been helpful to me on our calls twice a day at nine and at four, uh, always coming up with good ideas, always being positive, always looking out for the best interests of uh, Burr Ridge, and just what I would expect from them to do. Um, so um, thank you for the support. These are trying times uh, and um, uh, I look forward to the next meeting with you uh, and hopefully soon we'll be back to normal. If there are mo no more comments, I take a motion to adjourn till April 27 at 7 p.m. So moved. So moved. All second. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we're we're adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.